Good evening, YouTube. Tire Metalhead Weatherman here. Hopefully, you guys are doing well. So, tonight, we're going to go ahead and get into what August is most likely going to look like. Of course, there is going to be room for changes on that, of course. But, that being said, this will give us a general idea. So, of course, hit that like button, smash that subscribe button, decimate that share button. Also, whether you're new or an older subscriber, make sure you're also smashing that bell hit that bell on have notifications set to all so that way you can see all the videos that you want or need that being said let's go ahead and get into things here we'll start out with the enhanced risk that we're seeing over here towards the western high plains here multiple severe thunderstorm watches even reports of a three inch hail currently reports are on the lower end right now at 75 but we could see an increase with this as time goes on as far as the threat itself is concerned it's a pretty small area in the uh, enhanced risk region. Main population center I've seen is Rapid City. There's others like Gillette, Spearfish, Rapid Valley, and Sturgis. But the uh, slight risk is a little bit large, a little bit more notable in, in uh, coverage. We have Pierre, Valentine, Cheyenne's not quite in there, neither is Casper, Wyoming, but Sheridan's in there, parts of uh, Montana in there, including Billings and Glasgow. And then, of course, a very large uh, marginal risk here that even stretches all the way towards the southeast and even the uh, Atlantic coast here. Also, we have to include this marginal risk over here towards Phoenix, where the weather has been very hot and very dry. The threat for thunderstorms being there is a good thing, so long as they aren't dry thunderstorms. But wind and hail today are the main threats. Huge hatch risk for hail, by the way. Going to probably see a little bit more in the way of significant hail tonight. There is a 2% tornado threat as well. The thing is, I'm not expecting a lot to come out of this because mainly I expect these storms to be elevated. Usually with big time hail threats, the storms are elevated. And with tornadic systems, you want storms to be a little bit more linked to the uh, surface. So with that being said, we'll go on to day two. We ha have three marginal risk areas, actually four. And um, for the most part, I don't expect these to get upgraded to slight risk except for this region right here. I think somewhere around here is where I would expect a slight risk upgrade if there's going to be one at all. Parameters do seem like they would be favorable for it, so we'll just have to see what happens there. But any of these areas, you could see a stray severe thunderstorm or two. Then on day three, I haven't seen this in a little while here. Let's hope this holds, but no severe risk. That would be a uh, really welcome sight. It's been a crazy year for severe weather. And crazy timing, nonetheless, too. But, like I said, there is chances of it maybe towards, I would say, the Midwest here. Towards Iowa, maybe towards Nebraska. But it's all dependent on parameters. I'm going to take a closer look at some of that as time goes on here. But as far as the uh, stretch down the line here, days 4 through 8, predictability is too low here, so... Still can't sleep, still far from finished as far as severe weather is concerned. And then, of course, with tropical season, work is endless here. So stay tuned. That being said, let's go ahead and get into the models now. So this is us looking at the 200. I'm going to put this in a uh, loop here. And what we're seeing is actually as we head later into the week here, I do see signs of a trough ejection and maybe even some really solid convergence divergence as far as heading into later this week towards Wednesday in particular I might be watching the Midwest and Northeast really closely but yeah look at this as we draw forward here this little sector right here definitely piques my interest it's a little more so towards uh, Pennsylvania may see something even as far up as uh, the New England region stretch, but it's a little bit uncertain right now, but the GSS, G, pff, GSS, GFS is showing uh, some sign, some uh, signals here for sure. The main reason that we're going to be hot also across a large part of the country is this ridge that's developed here. Also, I've noticed that this ridge is starting to move off to the east a bit more, and as a result now, we will start to see a chance for some monsoonal flow beginning to develop across the southwest here. Hopefully this will lower the temperatures a little bit, but it will increase your rain chances. 
drought's becoming a big problem over there. So might be some positive news on the way. We do see another ridge beginning to develop right here as time goes on, though. So we'll have to see what happens with that. A new uh, pattern is going to be developing here as we head closer towards the mid-month in August. So we'll have to keep an extra close eye on that. And then maybe towards the northern tier of the U.S., maybe even Canada, we'll have to watch out for severe weather potential. Could be some uh, bigger potential setups down the line as well especially if this comes to fruition here we'll see what happens with that i'm not going to really get into too much detail since we're at the end of the model run here at this point we'll take a look at 500 as well see how some of this translates from the uh, 200 so far but of course like i said we're not going to read too too heavily into this considering the fact that again like i said we're looking pretty far we're looking almost two weeks in advance towards the end of the model run here so we're waiting for this to load, actually. Oop. So now that we've done that, we can clearly see that an ejection could be possible here towards 500. It's really towards the mid-levels where this might become more prevalent. But towards the upper levels right now, some signals are showing. Again, like I said, thus being a little over three to four days out, it's... it's uh, going to be tricky to kind of go over something like this. Northeastern setups can be a little bit weird, a little bit interesting say, to uh, say the least here. So as we go forward here, we'll continue to see a changing pattern and probably start to see a lot more activity focused towards the uh, northern tier of the states, towards the plains, and maybe even towards the Great Lakes. Could be more potential setups as well towards the northeast too. So a lot going on here, a lot to keep track of. You can even see over here towards the Pacific a few new systems trying to develop on the uh, tropical end of things. We'll probably be doing a tropical outlook tomorrow unless something major occurs. But that's what the wind pattern is looking like. As far as the temperatures are concerned, this is what we could see with our average temperatures here. And what we're seeing, of course, unfortunately, with that ridge developing is some really uh, intense, uh, really intense heat beginning to develop over here towards the uh, southern plains and even the southeast as well. The heart of the country is going to be pretty hot this first week in uh, August and then into the second week. Most of the uh, heat shifts out and then we start to see uh, temperatures begin to become a little bit more cool over here towards the northern plains here. Like I said, with that pattern change, it's going to bring a change to the temperatures. Also, seeing that trough and trough ejection develop will allow for uh, cooler temperatures to exist across the northeast. Uh, th there could be some uh, significant areas of uh, cooler temperatures, maybe even as close to about tw maybe even 20 degrees below average in some cases. Still hard to say because we're, like I said, we're looking really far out. But as time goes on pattern begins to become a little bit more zonal like it was before and the heat will start to build back again but at least now we're starting to get a little bit more of a break here so we go towards the end of august into september here most of the country is back to being slightly above average and then of course across the south the heat is going nowhere sadly so with that being said here that's what we're looking at as far as uh, the temperature being uh, above or below average here okay I was trying to get the precip to pop up. I don't know why temperature remained but as time goes on here looking through the first week August it's gonna be pretty dry across the south most of the active weather is going to be more so towards the uh, western high plains heart of the country towards the corn belt and then towards the Ohio Valley as we go for further along here this does start to push off to the east and then eventually we start to level out as far as uh, moisture content is concerned. Still pretty dry across the south, so this is going to be a little bit of a quieter weather pattern than what we've seen over the last few weeks. And then as we head into September, this is going to be persisting. So it looks like we might be getting into a slightly more stable pattern across the uh, eastern half of the country, or at least towards the southern half of the country. The northern half is a different story. Of course, as we start to transition closer to fall, we're going to start to uh, see things eventually become maybe a little bit more unsettled, but we'll have to 
cross that threshold when, whenever we get there. So that's what we're looking like as far as temperatures are concerned and precip. As far as um, average numbers, let's actually get a look at the values now. So the thing with this is, even with it being in some cases maybe 20 to 30 degrees cooler than average down the line here, it's still going to be hot. It's still going to be pretty warm even across the northeast. Towards the south, though, it's going to be uh, the dog days of summer for sure. Tongue, tongue held out, panting, and just holding on to, for dear life, especially if you work outside like me. So one uh, positive thing to note here as well, though, is with this uh, trough trying to develop here, hopefully this holds true. I'm not sure if we're if I'm seeing these numbers correctly or not, but seeing 75 here, that wouldn't be uh, so bad and start out the month. But as we go on here, of course, that won't last. And then eventually it's going to get even hotter just across the entire country as a whole here. Here's that trough ejection coming into play a little bit more. And we'll start to see those temperatures begin to drop off a bit towards the northeast. And really, that seems like the main spot that's going to be cooler than average. There is a little blotch over here towards North and South Dakota where temperatures are going to be a little bit cooler. And then eventually, that's going to become a point of interest as well. Not just with the severe weather threat, but... uh below average temperatures too but as a whole here still stuck in the dog days of summer a lot of us so keep the water on hand keep keeping the air conditioned if you can uh, also freon might be helpful too and then if you do happen to be working outside just work at a good pace and take breaks as needed maybe take a few more breaks that being said nothing really changing here as far as the uh, temperatures are concerned one thing to note will always, of course, be the dew points for this time of year. Especially if you're across the uh, southern half of the country, we already know. Usually during this time of year, it still stays pretty muggy. This year has been exceptionally muggy. But down the line here, maybe we might get to see a little bit of a reprieve here. So this is heading into the start of the week here. It's still pretty muggy, but we're starting to see a little bit of a drop off here as far as some of the uh, dew points are concerned. It's not the 70s aren't quite making it as far to the north as they were previously. Where at one point we were even seeing the 70 degree dew points into the Ohio Valley, the northeast. We're starting to see some 60s, starting to see a few more 50s. Unless you're in the deep south, dew points are starting to improve a little bit. But as time goes on with that trough beginning to develop again towards the northeast, that is going to allow for surges of moisture to develop across the uh, Ohio Valley once more, Midwest, and even the northeast here. At this point, this is kind of concerning, seeing an 80 degree dew point here in Ohio. That's wild. But, of course, this is towards the end of the model run here, so we'll have to take this with a grain of salt. But even then... Humidity is still not going anywhere, but it's not quite as bad starting out for the month, but we'll see what happens with it, of course. Like I said, these forecast models are not everything, as we all know. There have been plenty of uh, severe events this year that have come up last second, and not much really popped up on the models. So, can't read into this too deeply, especially looking further down range here. So with that being said here, let's go ahead and look at the uh, thunderstorm potential as we head down the line here. So any of these areas where you're seeing the pink as time goes on through this time frame here is going to be where you see the greatest potential for thunderstorms. It's the lightning flash density model. It's a really cool model that picks up on the probability or number of uh, lightning flashes per day. Or basically it's like its own little forecast in a way. But... Like I said, anywhere where you start to see those red colors, that means that you have a pretty good chance of thunderstorms at a particular point in time. Unfortunately, with the Euro in comparison to the GFS, it only goes up to 10 days versus 16 with GFS. So we can't look at quite as far out, but nonetheless here, still uh, some pretty valuable info here for sure. As far as, time go as, far as uh, the timing is concerned, 
mainly uh, thinking towards the early part of the month, we're going to see a lot of activity, of course, towards the heart of the country, especially the northern tier of the country. A few storm systems that end up going through the southeast here and there. But I think that's mainly going to be due to the uh, summertime setup that we tend to typically see where we have the high dew points, the warm temperatures. Any sort of lifting mechanism can uh, trigger off a few thunderstorms. So no real surprises there. But of course, as we go through the early part of the month, we're probably going to see a lot more lightning flash density over here towards the northeast, especially as we get later into the uh, first half of the month. So that being said, let's go ahead now and take a look at what our precipitation is going to be possibly looking like over the next 16 days. All right. So here we are putting the uh, radar loop into progress here. And we can see that things still remain pretty active for the most part. There's a few of those storm systems heading towards the southeast here. A lot more activity towards the northern half of the country, especially as we get later into the month. So a lot to keep an eye out for. The monsoonal flow does begin to uh, come into play here across a good chunk of the uh, southwest here. Good news for them. Trough, the trough here definitely looks like it's going to cause some problems north of the border as well. And a few of those storm systems could end up possibly having a good bit of severe weather with them too. So it's going to be interesting to see how things develop up there as well. We will try to keep an eye on Canada here and there. If this is a significant setup, we'll definitely make a video for it. So that being said, one last thing we're going to take a look at here is going to be the climate outlook as a whole. This is the entire 30-day stretch for um, August as of right now. As we talked about before, the below average temperatures are existent mainly across the uh, Midwest here. For the most part, anywhere else, either you have an equal chance of either below or above average temperatures, or you could be baking over here like anyone here from the orange area onward. If you're towards the uh, yellowish orange area here maybe it might not be so bad but probability still high for a uh, pretty above average August here it even exists across Alaska which is uh, pretty crazy here it's pretty uh, high probabilities at, at that too also want to make note of the Northwest here which has also got a very high probability actually the highest probability on the map here of having above average uh, temperatures for this m upcoming month here which is crazy and then of course we'll zoom in and take a look at the precip unless you're uh, in Arizona towards Phoenix where we're starting to get into that monsoonal flow this ridge is still going to cause its fair share of problems for New Mexico as far as getting moisture is concerned over towards uh, Utah parts of western Colorado western Wyoming into Idaho even parts of uh, even parts of Nevada still gonna have a little bit of a struggle getting some of that moisture going even prevalent across Alaska here but as far as a precipitation is concerned we're looking like we're actually gonna be above average overall across the eastern half of the country here very interesting uh, look here in comparison to what we were seeing with the uh, latest GFS of course this was issued on August on uh, excuse me July 20th not August but we'll probably see an update with this very soon but definitely a lot to keep an eye on here definitely looking like it's going to be an interesting month and we cannot forget about the tropics because this can blow any part of this outlook wide open if we were to get any sort of tropical storm or hurricane to develop and make impact with land towards any part of the u.s whether it's eastern or western but that being said here, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. You found it useful. If you did, you know what to do. Smash that like button, decimate that subscribe button, and obliterate the share button also. If you are new or if you've been around for a minute, make sure that you smash that bell as well. This has been Tire Metalhead Weatherman. I'll see you guys in the next video. Till then, take care. Have a good night. We'll see you soon.